Seth, good morning. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Life is wonderful, man. How about yourself? It's good. No complaints. Uh, I was curious about the tweet that you had. I'm watching the game in real time with Duke at NC State. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have opinions on Grayson Allen, but we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. But you thought strong enough to tweet out that you think he should sit down the rest of the year. What did you see that would make you say that? And do you still feel that way? Yeah, it's more take a leave of absence. I'm not saying quit on his team, quit on his brothers. I'm saying I see a kid when he's at the best version of himself. That's what Coach K always talks about, the best version of yourself. When he's at the best version of himself, he's aggressive. He's attacking. He's got a bounce. He's got an energy. He's got a, a passion. I don't see that in him. Basketball is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a release. It's just supposed to be a, a way to get away from everything. Um, it doesn't seem, watching him play, and I've been a big Grayson Allen fan. I love the way he played. Uh, he's not that same guy. I mean, that's just the way it is. So sometimes you got to take a step back to take two steps forward. You know, like, and, and, and to me, that would probably be maybe good for him, maybe good for their team. Because, look, I, I work with two Duke guys. <laughs> we can't go anywhere, anywhere, five, six, ten times a day they got to answer, what's wrong with Grayson Allen? What would you do? How was it handled? Do you think those Duke players are dealing with the same thing? Do all those freshmen that have their own issues, that have, you know, trying to fit into playing college basketball, learning how to compete, make, realizing it's not as easy as it looks on TV? But to me, it really came from, I look at the kid and... I don't see the same passion and energy, his body language. Forget about all the stuff, uh, other stuff that's happened. And then him walking through another team's huddle, you know, to me, you know, forget about I, I, I defended him on at the BC thing. I thought it was nothing. The Florida State thing, I thought it was nothing. You're not walking through someone else's top now. Uh, you know, people say it happens all the time. No, it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. It was a bad decision, but... That's not the reason I said what, that he should step away. He should step away because he obviously is not the best version of himself. And what does he need to get there? I don't know. But it seems like what he's doing right now is not working. Yeah, he almost feels like he thinks he's a victim here. And it, he doesn't have the confidence that he's had before that we've seen. Uh, walking through the team huddle, um, you know, He's got to avoid those situations, and he didn't avoid a situation. Did I think it was much? No, but because it's him, it's a little bit more. Sure. But my concern, though, if you sit him down for the rest of the year, what team, what NBA team would want to draft Grayson Allen if he can't handle this? He can't play his way out of this, and you're going to go into the rigors of playing in the NBA? I wouldn't touch him, Seth. Well, here's the thing. He doesn't have to sit the rest of the year, and I would probably – I would say, look – I would say take a leave of absence and figure things out. Look, I'm, I'm talking from the point of view as a parent, as a coach. I've got three daughters. Like, to me, if I saw, watched my daughters, and some of my daughters play competitive athletics, watch them struggle and go through what, they're, what, what he's going through, I think it would hurt me. It would definitely hurt me. I mean, look, you know, no one loves your kids more than you do. Mm -hmm. And... You know, look, the NBA, look, if he's good enough, he'll play in the NBA. If he's good enough, the NBA, someone's going to give him a shot, he's going to play in the NBA. There's no doubt about it. Is that the whole thing? Well, if we do this, he's not going to play in the NBA. How about we, if we do this, it's just in his best interest right now? How, is, how do you think it, was, it is to be Grayson Allen walking across the Duke campus? Pretty tough. Pretty tough. I mean, I mean, so like, I mean, everyone said, "Oh, you know, I love the lines." People say, "Oh, you're saying that because K beat you so many times." You're saying that, "Oh, you you were fired." That's why you're not. No, I'm saying that as a parent. I'm saying that as a parent of of someone. I think the kid's a terrific player. I think he's a skilled, aggressive, attacking, athletic, offensive player. He's not that guy right now. I can tell you that much. Can you play yourself out of it? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know everything that's going on, and I'm not. I'm not saying I'm analyzing him, but I, I can. I can see. I've watched uh, enough competitive players, and I've been around this thing for 36 years. I can see when something's not right. And you know, anyone who watched that game the other day, you watch a zillion games, man. I mean, you watch great players. When you were watching, what were you thinking about? Grayson Allen's game, just the way he was carrying himself, his body language, his bounce, his energy, his passion. 
What were you? What, what was going on your mind? Uh, he seemed lost, and I kept thinking maybe he would have a play. Now he's going against a great backcourt that uh, mm-hmm. embarrassed Duke, but I kept thinking maybe there's a play that sort of sparks him, and there was never that play. And he's always been one of those guys that's able to create a play that you know mm-hmm. provides energy for sure. his team. What concerned me more is when I saw him on the bench. Um, yep. He just me too. he's drifting. You know, he's just drifting. Mm -hmm. And when he went out of control earlier in the year, that was more disconcerting than trying to trip a player from Elon. He was throwing a temper tantrum. That's when I I take it. I don't let him play in the second half. And I know Coach K has forgotten more basketball than I know. But I, I worried about that as I saw a kid who was lost and he needed to sit down for more than one game or two weeks. He needed to have it where he was ready to come back, not when you know somebody said to come back. It's when he felt comfortable to come back and be that player. And um, I just see I see somebody lost right now, adrift. You and I are at hundred percent on the same page. You're like I, I didn't get caught up in the number of games suspension. Like to me, I don't think this has been a number. But the the problem is the problem. Come back when he's ready, when he has a clear mind, when he's engaged, when he feels good about himself, when he's excited to be part of a team, when he can carry himself in a manner that you expect him, that you've seen him. Yeah. I mean, when he can be the guy that played that magnificent game in that championship game, think about his body language, his energy, his passion then, and think about what you see on TV right now. So, I mean, like, look, I, I feel for the kid. As a parent, as a dad... That 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 time out when he was on that bench, that tore at me as a parent. It it, it tore at me as a parent. Uh, I couldn't even imagine how I would handle that if it was my own daughter. So uh, that's where I was coming from. I know I know it's created a little bit of a firestorm. I understand that it was that wasn't the attention. It was from good intentions, and 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 I'm not a guy to tweet stuff to get you know followers. That's the way I felt in my heart of hearts, and people can't handle it. You know, so be it. Well, it's your job to be able to, you know, have uh, criticism or analysis. But I, I, you know, when somebody takes it a step further and say, "Hey, you can never beat Duke," and you got fired, you know, that then then it, then they're being unfair to what you're trying to say there. And and that that yeah. that was what I wanted to at least have some clarity here of what you were saying, why you were saying it, and, sure. and then finding out the reaction. Look, I know you're joining us on short notice and you got to go, but Seth, great to talk to you, and hopefully, uh, come tournament time, we'll be able to have you back on. I would love to do it, my friend. Thanks for having me. All right, that's Seth Greenberg. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.